So I kind of want to jump into the video and show you guys everything that you get when you purchase this wig. I'm going to show you how I put it on. I'm going to give you all the details. I'm going to give you the lowdown, so don't worry. Please let me know down below if you are enjoying it so far. Like this video and subscribe if you're new here and join our fam. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my video today. I am excited to get wiggy with you guys. You guys know how I feel about wigs. I'm a little obsessed. Honestly, I feel like once you get into wigs, you start to become obsessed and you just want more and more and more and more and you just cannot stop. I'm sorry if that happens to you. It's kind of like a wig thing, a wig person thing. Without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, guys, so we have three wigs to look at and get into, unbox. So all three of the wigs came in this really big box. It fit all of them inside of it, and this is the box you've probably seen in the promos where Nikita is like doing this number. I actually did that on Snapchat. I couldn't help myself. This is what you're supposed to do, just so you know. So I think that's a really cool concept because she is a, a dragon, putting these dragon, you know, claw, clawings. Putting these dragon like clawings in the box is pretty cool. I like that. And they're actually like holographic. And I'm quickly going to show you guys the inside of the box. The box is almost bigger than me. So all of the wigs are in here. So I'm guessing not everybody is going to purchase all three wigs, but if you do go for one, you'll receive it in this box. And this is very similar to the PR box I received, but it is, you know, just containing that one single wig. And it has, you know, the dragon symbol and also these, you know, detailings with dragon scales over the front of it. So in here we have the wig. I did already open this wig so it doesn't look as perfect as it did when I got it. I was really excited about Safira because I have looked high and low for a blue lace front wig that is like the perfect shade of blue. It's not like too, too blue and it's straight. Like they're literally so hard to find. When you receive your wig, it is packaged really nicely. It is inside of a really large plastic bag, but it does have some padding inside of the wig as well as like a hairnet around it to make sure that it's just really nice and combed straightly in the bag. You never want to shove your wig inside of a bag without properly combing it. It can really damage the wig and make its lifespan a lot shorter than taking care of it. So just make sure when you are putting it back in this bag that you comb it really nicely and you try to keep it as straight as possible when putting it in the bag. The more you kind of scrunch your wig around and you just don't care, the lifespan of the wig is just going to be only like a few months. It will, will not last very long. So just make sure you're taking good care of your wig. So in here we have some mattifying powder, which I think is really nice. We're going to be using this when we style the wig. It does come with a brush. This is a Bellamy wood brush. I have a couple of these. I do like them for wigs and I think that they come comb the hair really nicely without overly combing it and making it really fluffy and frizzy. There is synthetic wig care instructions. If you're interested in looking at those, you will receive it with your wig. You also get a wig cap, so this is always needed when wearing a wig. Guys, I have literally, I've had some tough times. I've left my wig cap at home numerous times I've been traveling. I've taken a pair of pantyhose, I've cut them, and I've used that as my wig cap because I didn't have one and it worked fine. But please learn from me, like, Keep this with your wig at all times. Don't separate it because if you do lose it and you're going on a trip, you're gonna have to use your pantyhose. It works. If you need something, like if you really, really need it and like you don't have this with you or you lose it, pantyhose does work. But one thing that I really love about Bellamy is that they include so many other products with the main products you're purchasing. They just include lots of tools and helpful things. This is one of them. This is a wig stand. This is just a black wig stand you can put in your beauty room. You can put it on your desk, wherever you're at, where you do your hair. This is really nice because at the end of the day, after you're done wearing your wig, you can place it on this stand, which will keep it nice and straight and it will not get tangled this way. I highly suggest you guys use this. You never want to throw your wig around the room. I know we all have those days. I sometimes do very often and I hate when I do that. It actually will ruin the texture of the hair. It also comes with this beautiful silk bag and I do like these to store my wig in when I'm traveling or I use these for extensions. So this is what the wig looks like out of the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and take the net off. Here is a look at the wig. You can see it's like a minty blue. It is definitely not like a super vibrant blue, but I do think this is way more wearable than like a really bright blue. This is something that I definitely would wear and I love it. So let's talk about the texture of the hair for a second. I feel like this hair feels almost like, even though it's a synthetic, 
it feels like it is a mixture of human in here i know it's not but they did a really great job at making these hairs feel very very real it is about a medium thickness it's not overly thick like most synthetic wigs are this actually looks very much so like real hair so i am very happy with that i can see they did drag some of that brown root color throughout this wig so you are going to see some light brown coloring mixed in with this mint the roots are very light they are ombre they are lighter than my hair but i think i'm going to be able to make it work because the front of my hair is over here are pretty light too so i think that i think it'll be okay i have some wigs that are actually this color in the root area i normally wear a lot darker of a root it is very very straight and i'm pretty sure if you use a flat iron on a very low heat setting you could get it even straighter than this there's a few little kinks in it right now but that's just because it was traveling in its package sometimes after you wear them for a little bit they will just kind of start to go straight i am using the brush to comb through it really quickly before we cut the lace so this is a much better look at the minty roots and the color and you can see the lace front here i was really really impressed with that root area normally you have to pluck this area or add some concealer the thing with wigs is sometimes they're just too thick they're way too thick and they look so so fake especially if you're wearing them out and the hairline on this is actually pretty thin up in here you can see straight through the lace you can see i have a wide part this is my real hair so everyone has a pretty wide parting area if this was extremely thick, it would look a lot more fake. So you don't want your wig to just have a thin line. You want it to be pretty wide and it will look more real. So this does have a lace front on it. That's this little piece here. That's the lace. And we're going to go ahead and cut that off using a pair of scissors. I like to go pretty close so I can make sure I get all of that lace off of the hairline of this wig. You can just use a pair of scissors from home. If you have a pair of tiny eyebrow scissors, that works too. But if you do have a nice sharp pair of scissors, it is best to use that because if you do have a more dull pair, it is going to really ruin the lace of the wig. It'll make it very jagged. It won't be as straight. So I would suggest using a brand new pair of scissors or something that's very, very sharp to cut the lace. We have some clips in here that we're going to be using to pin the hair into. We do have a strap under here, which I do own other Bellamy wigs that do not have this strap on them. So I really appreciate that with this collab. And you do have some pins in here that we're going to stick into the hair that will secure it on. The last thing that you want is to go to an event, to go out, go on a date and have your wig sliding off. I've been there. I've been literally told before by someone your wig is sliding off and it is so embarrassing. You do not want your wig falling off in public. It is, it's kind of like ratchet, but it's also, it's like frowned upon. It's like having a booger. Like you don't want someone to see that. Like you don't want, or having food in your teeth, another thing. That's basically like the equivalent. And it's gonna take some getting used to to get your wig like perfectly on. It doesn't happen overnight. I still have like struggle days that my wig does not look good. So you just gotta keep trying every day and you will get your wig to look perfect. So I like to start at the edge of the lace first. And you want to make sure that you cut all the way around and you really want to make sure that you are not cutting into the hair or else it will thin the hair out. And I advise those of you who are cutting the lace to not cut the lace with it on your head. You will cut your baby hairs and you don't wanna do that. So I would suggest going ahead and just cutting it just how I am right now. Take your time with it, go slowly and make sure that you are just being very, very precise and not cutting into the hair. now we've got that lace off the wig we can actually put it on now you can see that i've cut the lace now i was pretty precise about it and i don't have any dangling edges going on i'm gonna go ahead and put the wig cap on so the nude is really nice because this is gonna match the lace front a lot better because it's not super dark and it's not super light i'm just gonna take my hair down and with the cap you just want to go ahead put it on like so i just do this i like to twist my hair like this and I just tuck it into the back area and I like to push it up and once you twirl your hair like this into the cap it is going to be a little bit bulging in this area so you want to make sure that you scrunch your hair around and really flatten it out you want to make sure that you're pulling your hair apart as it's in the cap and then flattening it so you can see how I do that pull it apart move it around a little bit 
I do end up pulling this back a little bit more. I'm not an expert with these caps. I actually don't really wear these caps that often. I usually wear the full caps, but these do work just as well. Some people will like French braid their hair underneath the cap or they'll have braids on because it keeps the hair back really nicely. You can do that too, but if you're just wearing it for the day or for a certain look, you can just kind of pop this wig cap on like I did. So coming back to the wig, you have straps in here that will increase the tightness of the wig on your head. I usually go for the second latch inside of the wig cap. You can see down here, it is on the second one to the last. So when you put on a wig like this with this strap, this is an adjustable strap inside. You're going to want to put it over your head like so and pull this strap back so it is nice and secure. And at this point, you can tighten it. I'm gonna tighten mine up. And you're gonna wanna pull this back. So we have it on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and brush it out first. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out a little bit of my baby hairs using a thin end of a teasing brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out a few. And you just wanna pull out the tiniest amount of hair. I am just using this eyebrow cake powder to go in and fill in the root a little bit because this is so light at the roots that it's not really matching my baby hairs as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it match with this black shadow. You can just use a regular eyeshadow or dark brown, whatever matches your actual hair color. I was at a photo shoot once and the hairstylist there used this to really help conceal the root. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the dark brown magic root cover up from L'Oreal. I just sprayed it once onto my brush and I'm just going to make sure to place this in the root. So mattifying powder is really good for wigs because with most synthetic wigs, you do get a lot of shine going on. Like there's so, so much shine because it isn't real human hair. That's kind of how you can tell the difference between a human hair wig and then a synthetic wig. So using a mattifying powder or using dry shampoo is a great way to make it look more realistic. I'm just going to tap it into the shiny area, which is kind of where the light would hit it, which would naturally be like at the top of it, on the side of it a little bit. And I'm just going to lightly tap this in. I don't feel like this one needs much of the mattifying powder because it doesn't really look that fake to me. It looks really, really real. Like especially the hairline, I am so, so impressed. That's a really, 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 really good hairline. The mint color is really nice too, especially for this time of year. I think the mint is so much more nice than just like a super vibrant blue. It's really pretty for winter. It feels really lightweight. And with most wigs, they're just really heavy on the head. It feels like you're wearing a very big hat. And this actually feels very light. So I hope you guys love this one. I'm gonna show you the other colors now. I'm gonna be just doing the same thing I did with this one, cutting the lace and blending it the same way. But I want you guys to see what the other colors look like. So basically with the other wigs, I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with Safira. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the lace and just kind of apply it in the same manner I did before. Me with blonde hair is so weird. So now that the wig's on, I'm gonna go ahead and take those same steps, pulling out these baby hairs a little tiny bit. Little babies, nothing too long, cause then it's, my hair's way too dark and it will not look good. If you mess up, you can just kind of tuck it back in. So I really do like this wig. What do you guys think about me blonde? I'm never blonde. I'm always like colorful or dark hair, but I actually think that this is a really nice blonde wig. I like that it is platinum and it's not like a yellowy blonde. It is a really nice icy blonde, which I don't own. I have a really low shortage of blonde wigs. I don't have barely any of them. And this one I'm in love with. The icy blonde is perfect. This is like the perfect shade of blonde. Honestly, every time I look at blonde hair, 
this is the blonde that i would want like i love love this icy white blonde this is giving me like lady gaga the countess or gwen stefani write down in the comments so far what your favorite has been blonde or blue blonde or blue honestly i'm kind of feeling this blonde i might have to wear this one more often because i really like it and just so you can take a peek at the hair line it looks amazing it literally looks so so good this blonde one is khaleesi which is reminiscent of khaleesi from game of thrones i don't watch game of thrones don't kill me i'm trying i'm trying to get into it i want to like sit down and start it and just have like snacks and like become obsessed you know so i'm gonna take this baby off and show you guys cassie And just so you guys can see the clips in this wig, they're right here and you can just kind of do this. I'm just kind of pressing it into the hair and then clip them down. They're just like extension clips that you put in for clipping extensions. Those baby hairs out a little bit more. Oh, I really love this one and I love the blue one so much. I could see myself wearing those two the most out of all of these. Such a pretty like baby pink. I feel like this one and Sephira are definitely like in a tie. I love both of them. I could see myself wearing both of them very often and I'm really pleased with how soft they are. And I think that this shade of pink is perfect for me. I love baby pink. I don't really go for like darker pinks and I'm hashtag obsessed. 